On this show, you'll find inspiration, motivation, and advice from experts, as well as valuable tips on how to get started or improve your business. Let's dive into how you can begin and grow your wisdom business. Inspiring others looks different for everyone. How will you inspire? Welcome to the Wise Dome Podcast and today we're chatting with James Dunn. James is a mindset and performance coach. He helps others to release their own limiting beliefs, rewrites the story of their lives so they can create the life they love living. James, welcome to the Wise Dome Podcast. Thank you, Nikki. I am super excited to be here. Oh, I'm just excited to be able to chat to you because of the way you've transformed your life, I just have to share this with our audience. So let's get started with how you got started. Yeah. So it has been a a crazy little journey, this thing called life um, for (laughs) me, you know, and there's so many experiences that I could share, but there's just a few that I like, you know, put it in a little nutshell, you know, kind of explanation kind of where I've come from or come from and what I've been through. So my name is James Dunn. Obviously um, I was adopted. I grew up in a household with an alcoholic father. I was arrested for attempted armed robbery by the time I was 17 years old, had my first kid when I was 21 and had my first of two divorces by the time I was 25 years old. So I I decided let's start out life with some challenges. Let's (laughs) let's see if we can get this uphill battle to try and climb through and see if we can go, you know, get over this hump or not. And, uh, so it, it was an interesting start to life, to say the least. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I interesting that you said, like, let's let's throw ourselves some challenges and so forth. And I really believe, yeah. even after some conversations I've had with guests that we've got, we've had, we get challenges thrown at us sometimes for a reason. And it's to test mm-hmm. us because we somehow, the universe knows we have the ability to overcome them. And it's a test. Are you going to yeah. overcome it? So how did you overcome that? Yeah. Well, it it took me quite a while. It took me quite a while. So I mentioned the first of my two divorces um, when I was 25. Um, Shortly before that, well, a few years before that, I had actually gotten introduced to personal development. Um, Or no, I guess it was right after that. So I'm stopping down the timeline. It was actually right after my first divorce. I got introduced to personal development, got a job. It was a management type position. They introduced me to the idea of setting smart goals and reading books like Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, you know, Stephen Covey, um, yep. things like that. And so I started studying all this and thinking, okay, wow, this is really interesting. This is a whole new direction I can kind of take my life. You know, I can kind of maybe come out of these areas that I've been struggling in in the past. Yeah. And and I did. I felt like I was making some progress in my life. But fast forward 14 years later, and I'm getting my second divorce, you know, and I'm like, well, what the hell just happened here? I'm Mr. Like, you know, Mr. Person Development. I'm studying all this stuff and I can regurgitate everything like verbatim yeah. to tell you how to live a wonderful life. Why am I yeah. getting a, a divorce again after I yeah. swore this would never happen? And what I realized was it was a very surface level of right. personal development. I was reading the books, but I wasn't actually applying anything. I wasn't embodying the lessons I was learning. Right. <laughs> um, and so where, where it really came down to me was recognizing, you know what, there's two divorces here, one common denominator, which is me. Mm -hmm. I'm the person that has to change. You know, the scenario is going to keep being the exact same if I keep showing up as that same person. And so what I did to make that big shift was I went to my very first live personal development event. I went to a Tony Robbins, Unleash the Power Within. And that's when the light bulb went, you know, like, oh my God. That big moment. Yeah. (laughs) This is it. Yes. That was the moment where to me, life really just turned dramatically. Um, I was like, I I was living what I thought was a happy life and it wasn't a bad life, Hmm. but I, once I went to that event and really got vulnerable and started sharing my story with other people and hearing their stories, um, that's when the transformation truly happened. Because as I shared, you know, some of the things I had gone through, Hmm. I was looking at life, like I'm just this fucked up kid who's gone through this crazy life and Hmm. just, isn't deserving of love, isn't deserving of, you know, true success, happiness, all of yeah. this. Yeah. But then I go to this event and I start sharing my story, like I said, and they start sharing their story with me. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. You've had crazy things happen in your life too. And I'm hearing these stories. Like one specifically, this lady got up and she told the story of how she was raised in a religious cult and she was used as a sex slave, you know, and then to hear how she had 
mm-hmm. worked through that and yeah. the amazing place she was in her life at that point. I'm like, well, what the hell am I crying about? Just because my dad drank a lot of beer, you know? Mm-hmm. And I mean, yeah. so I went out this mm-hmm. stuff got arrested. I mean, this woman has gone through things so much worse than I ever went through. And not that we want to compare, you know, exactly. my tragedy versus your tragedy or my trauma yeah. versus your trauma or anything like that. Yeah. But just seeing that how she was able to overcome that and actually thrive after that, yeah. it just opened up this whole world to me. Like, wait a minute, I I can take that responsibility for myself and I can create an amazing, incredible life, regardless of what's happened to me in the past. Um, you know, like we talked about, yeah. we can look at that stuff now and say, I can overcome this and I can learn from it. And I can grow from it. And that's really what has happened ever since that day. Yeah. It's almost like it, it just sort of, that awakening, it just makes sense. Like all of a sudden, all those questions you have in your mind just start making sense when you can relate it with someone else's perspective yeah. as well and what they've been through. Isn't it amazing how sometimes you get that light bulb moment <laughs> and you think, it's just so freaking obvious, but how did I not see yeah. this? Before? But sometimes you just need to yeah. hear it from someone else's perspective and you get it then. It just makes starts making sense. So when you obviously went through that transformation, realising things, you know, obviously you had started doing this and noticed that you need to transform your, from yourself yeah. and take on those things. But what actually took you to that level and how did you go to that level where you just literally went into that whole coaching mode and grew your business that way? Yeah. So what it, where it really kind of started from was, so I went to that first live event, mm. like I say, it was hugely transformative for me. Yeah. I came back home all fired up. I'm going to change the world, man. Everything's going to be so much different. But yeah. then you come home, you get back in the same routine, same habits around the same people. You yeah. get back into the, you know, nothing changed. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. so what I ended up doing was went back to my next event. You know, I went back to another Tony Robbins event, got fired up again and did this a couple of times. And, and I absolutely loved going to these, but what I, fa- what I figured out was I need that community here. I need that locally, you know, kind of, uh, I can keep going to these events. They're awesome. But if I don't have that here around me every day, or at least on a very regular occurrence here yeah. where I can actually get in, you know, face to face with people, yeah, it's not going to change my world. And yes. so I started looking for groups. Like, I know I'm not going to find this level of an uh, event kind of thing, you know, yeah. here locally, but I can find maybe hopefully some kind of a group because hmm. I've already, I'd been into real estate before and done real estate investor groups or like networking events, you know, for like your chamber of commerce, things like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Like there's got to be something personal development related here. I live fairly close to, you know, a decent sized metropolitan area. It's like, there's got to be something. And I was looking and looking, looking, couldn't find anything. And so... You know, the old saying goes, if you can't find it, make it, you know, build it, create it, whatever, you know, so that's what I did. I was like, I'm just going to start my own group. And really, that's where it came from initially was I'll just start a group of my own, bring people in. And I kind of went through initially, it was just going to be a book club. I had fairly close to that time, read the book, The Success Principles by Jack Canfield. Mm -hmm. Amazing book. Yeah. Thought, you know what, I'll just do like uh, books you know, book study group kind of a thing, bring people in, we can, you know, all read the book, talk about it. Uh, But then as I was going through the process, trying to find some place to host that, it just shifted. And just one of those where once the ball started rolling, then it just transformed from what my initial vision of it was to, well, I'm just going to start presenting. I'm like, I know this is going to scare the crap out of me. I'm not a public (laughs) speaker. I literally remember the very first event I did, yeah. I had my nice little, you know, PowerPoint presentation and I put them like, I'm not a public speaker. I'm not a life coach. You know, I'm just like telling people ahead of time. So when I get up here and look stupid, don't <laughs> make fun of me. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, I've made sure they all knew that literally yeah. within the first 30 seconds of starting the meeting, yeah. I'm probably going to mess this all up, but I just want you to know we're going to try. And, yeah. and so that's really where it started was just mm-hmm. not being able to find what I was looking for. So I created it. And then through that process of hosting that, group for a couple of years, realizing I could be a great conduit for a lot of people, um, even beyond what was here local, because, you know, we, we got an okay size group, but it wasn't like that global impact that you start envisioning in your head as you start realizing I can do this. I can get in front of people and I can talk, or I can help people because these people are coming up to me afterwards and like, wow, this was so amazing. Thank you so much for putting this on, you know, and it really starts hitting home. Like I can impact lives. So let's figure out how we can break this out to even bigger and better. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And, you know, taking that initiative, realizing, you know, if it's not out there, I'm going to do this myself. And 
how did you, like, I'd love to know, you know, when you did put it out there and say, you know, who wants to come along to this, how did you go about doing that? No, thankfully, I found a website called meetup.com. Oh, yep, yep. Yeah. And I don't even know how I stumbled across it. If I was just, you know, had Googled. How do you meet up? (laughs) Yeah, some kind of groups, you know, personal development groups or something. And it popped up and it basically, um, like it had a bunch of different, you know, real estate investment groups and things like that. Matter of fact, I think as I think back about it, I had been to a meetup group, but it was for real estate investing. So I guess I went on there looking, but I looked for personal development. There was nothing there, but it did have this little box. It's like, 35 people are interested in personal development in Edwards, Illinois, whatever the town I live in, you know, or something like that. And so I don't know if it really had that many people that were interested or if it was just some little like, we're going to try and hook you in. Yeah. So I was like, you know, create a group. I'm like, all right, I'll do it. And (laughs) I'll buy it. Yeah. And it worked out. But that's awesome. You just don't know how, like a lot of people start very differently in so many different ways. And it's just, yeah, it's great that you went out there and actually, you know, decided to, let's just start something. Couldn't yeah, find it. Well, let's create it. And locally. Is, I mean, we get so caught up in worrying about how am I going to do this? Um, you know, my daughter and I, we were just watching the, what was it called? Return to Space. It's a documentary on Netflix about Elon Musk and SpaceX. Yeah. And there was a very amazing little section in this documentary and I actually even paused it after the narrator had you know made the comments about it and what they were talking about was you know he was developing SpaceX and they got to the point where they realized they were going to have to do reusable rockets that was going to be the key to really bringing the cost of space travel down and that's what was going to be able to make it um interplanetary travel realistic you know for us all of these things but they they realized very early on and Elon is very big into this mindset of we're going to screw this up you know we're not going to be able to just to send up a rocket you know once and it work that's not going to happen and it's yeah. not going to be the second or third one we're going to just blow up a lot of rockets and so we're just going to have to understand that and just go for it and yeah yep. they showed the comparison for SpaceX and NASA, and they kind of showed NASA's mentality is we're going to sit down, we're going to write every single thing out on a piece of paper, everything that could possibly go wrong before we try anything. Yeah. And it kind of showed why NASA is struggling so much in terms of space travel, you know, even though they were the leaders in it for us, you know, here in the States. Yeah. And now SpaceX is going crazy, you know, Mm -hmm. um, but it was just taking on that mentality. It's like, we don't know how this is going to work. We're just going to try it and we're going to screw it up and we're going to try it again. And we're going to screw it up. But we're going to learn every single time we do this and we're going to get better and better and better. And lo and behold, yeah. now they have invented reusable rockets. And it was ridiculous when they showed the cost per kilogram to send something up into space. I mean, it yeah. used to be like millions of dollars and now it's literally like 4,000 US dollars, you know, per kilogram. So it's yeah. just, you got to just go for it. You You'll do. figure it out. Yeah. And it's so good that you actually took that, you know, you helped your daughter understand that. Yeah. Like you well, just, it was so, such, so many ways. Yeah. It was such a, a key um, lesson for her in her life. And I'm really big on, we have a lot of conversations like that. Yeah. And so I specifically paused it right after they had explained that. And I said, yeah. did you catch what they said? And she said, yeah. yeah. And I didn't want it to be one of, she's 13 years old. And I didn't want it to be yeah. one of those like, yeah, dad, I caught it. And she had it. no yeah. clue what the heck they said. So I was like, okay, so explain it back to me. And she got it. I'm like, yes, that is yeah. so awesome. Um, <laughs> That's a proud daddy yeah. moment. I tell you though, I, yeah. my husband yeah. does that quite often. We we have a joke about it at home. It's like, <laughs> don't ask dad anything while we're eating because he's going to pause the show and he's going to explain, give us a whole lecture on it because he does. Yeah. But it's, it is, it's, there's so many lessons you want to teach your kids, but that is a really good lesson there. And, and yeah. knowing that there's so many ways. And I had a conversation just recently with a, a guest that we recorded just earlier in the week. And she talked about there's three options. There's not the yes, no, but there is a middle option there somewhere. And it's thinking yeah. outside the square. And it's sometimes that will come about by realizing you have to make those mistakes because yeah. that's sometimes where that third option will just pop in and go, ah. but, yeah. um, it's a, uh, you know, there's this whole thing about, you know, imposter syndrome and so forth. And obviously you wouldn't have had to go through that because what well, you probably did at the very beginning oh, I have. You know, with your yeah, disclaimer I saying, I've yeah. never done this, but you know, yeah. like starting to see the momentum growing with your business and everything like that. Did you start off just one-on-one or did you, obviously you did your webinars, like you, you uh, sorry, seminars at the time. Yeah. You are one to many and coaching people and talking to them and everything. Yeah. Where was the point? Did you listen? Like, did you have people coming to you saying, I would really like to do this one-on-one? Is that where you changed? 
It was more of, so with the group, like say everything really started with the group. Like say it was mm-hmm. never, it was not even like initially that I thought, Hey, I'm going to be a life coach or even anything like that. It yeah, was yeah. just, I knew I wanted to create a community because yeah. I realized community is so key to the transformation exactly. and really building that identity that we want to build, you know, whatever that happens to be. You, there's a famous Jim Rohn quote, you are the average of the five people you surround yourself with the most. Yeah. And so knowing that community, that's what I started with. Yeah. And just through that, like you say, seeing how big of an impact it was having on people. Mm. I actually met a guy at the very first meeting that I did. He came there to support the speaker that I had brought in. Right. Um, and he and I talked and he was a life coach and yeah. he's like, man, if there's everything I ever do for you, let me know. Well, I ended up hiring him. And I guess through working with him, I saw, well, wait, I could do this too. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, I'm already doing it in a group setting. Yeah. Why not go ahead and do it in, you know, like a one-on-one setting. And that's really kind of where the shift um, happened. And again, there's so many of these things where if we tried to stop and think about it ahead of time, we would never get to that point. It's just starting the process and let's see what naturally works out, what naturally mm-hmm. flows to you and mm-hmm. you gravitate towards, because again, I don't think I, I would have necessarily just start out like I'm going to be a life coach. No, yeah, <laughs> it just it just flowed there. Yeah, and it's just like NASA. You can't be perfect. Don't try and no. be perfect. You can't. Perfection doesn't come from no experience. Perfection no. comes from experience. The point is, just like you said, the difference between Elon Musk and, and NASA or SpaceX and NASA. It's just so true. With yeah. with moving into your one on one coaching. Was there, a, did you go into it just with following like a program or anything like that? Or did you just decide, no. I know my my steps, my format, I'll stick yeah, with that? Or was, did you change it from going from a multiple, like a, a one to many to one to one? Obviously, did yeah. you change your format based on that? It was, so. so with the group project, that was all, I would either start with, um, like either I would bring in somebody locally, like a speaker and have them kind of present on something, or then yeah. I would decide, okay, as I'm watching them kind of what they're doing, I'm like, okay, well, I could do something like that pulled from my Tony Robbins experience or the books I had read. Let me put together like if, you know, 45 minute presentation, something like that. Yeah. Um, but then when I got into the one-on-one coaching, my coach had not had like a specific program. It wasn't like, we're going to start here and do this, 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 and this, and this, it was more of, Hey man, where are you struggling at? You know, what, what do you feel like you need to focus on? And we just kind of flowed naturally with that as well. Yeah. So that's kind of how I approached it uh, because what, and I understand, you know, when I go and start working with people, we are going to have a sort of a framework that I'm going to eventually get us to, but people are at such different levels on, you know, is it, you know, a confidence issue? Is it, um, I don't know what to do issue, you know, it's trying to figure out where they're at mm. because some people you'll start with them. Well, it starts everybody. We all start out thinking it's this and we realize, no, it's not even that it's this thing over here that we need yeah. to work on. And so, you know, you don't want to go into too rigid of, well, I don't care what you need. I'm going to tell you this first, like, no, we need to figure out exactly what it is that you need, even though you thought it was one thing, it's something completely different. You know, I just started working with someone here recently and we were just she was under the impression that it was like, you know, I, I'm in this transition I want to figure out what I want to do for my life and all that. So that's what we started talking about, but what we were struggling, you know, in the beginning of it, trying to get Mm -hmm. her to break out and find this vision for her life. And what it finally, you know, we figured out was she had been, I don't want to say she was in survival mode, but on a certain level, she was still in survival mode. So Mm -hmm. the way I like to say it is if you've been starving for your you know first meal in a week mm. you're not thinking about filet mignon you just want a meal yeah you know so she couldn't think of her dream life because right <laughs> now she needed just to get some stability in her life she needed to feel calm and relaxed in the life that she had first and then we can start looking at what's my passion what mm. am i really excited about what do i want to do five ten years from now we mm. had to get past what the hell am i going to do today what am i going to do this yeah. week yeah. you know that's a really good point to make We've got to rewrite the story that we have in our head so it makes sense. You know, you've got to build the foundation somewhere. You've got to go to the next level, next level. Don't think you've got to go from here straight to a mansion because it only happens to minute few people. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's very very lucky. You know, make that leap. And I know, like for me, a a big piece of the coaching puzzle is your identity. You know, if 
like you say, if you're, you're that hungry dog that's starving for, you know, that first bite, you know, in a week, you don't feel like you're the pampered dog that's living in the mansion, you know, that's yeah. getting the foo foo food or whatever you want to call it, you know? So <laughs> you don't have that mindset yet. You've got to work your way to that. You've got to take some baby steps. And sometimes you can take quantum leaps, you know, Yeah. but there, there's definitely some work that comes in between that. Uh, and mm-hmm. we got to figure out where you're at first yeah. uh, and, and make that recognition, uh, get that awareness around it. And like mm-hmm. we talked about, start rewriting those stories of, okay, if we look at all these crazy things, like talking about adoption, the, you know, my dad, me being arrested, yeah. these all built this identity in my head of who I thought mm. I was. And once yeah. I was able to go through and rewrite that and change that, wait a minute, that was just some events that happened in my life that didn't have any effect on me other than what effect I let it have on me. Yeah. Because I start listening to stories like, I don't know if you ever heard the story of Oprah Winfrey and her journey, you know, where she started out in life. Mm-hmm. Um she had a just horrific childhood, you know, beaten, yep. raped, all of these things, you know, and like, look at the impact she's having on the world. You know, mm. she was able just to let all that go. And when you start hearing stories like that, and again, the lady I talked about at the event that I went to, yeah. we can let all of that go. It's just, it's a choice. And we maybe depending on how long you've held on to that story, you might have to go to therapy versus, you know, life coaching or something like that and really work through that and go through different processes to to um, un- unravel, learn all of that, I guess, yeah, you know, let yeah. all that go, Yeah, but it, it can be done. And it's a, it's, a, it's a big word when it comes to mindset, isn't it? It's choice. Yeah. It's choice that we make ourselves. So with the, with coaching, um, going through taking on coaching and everything like that, is there anything that you've, well, you've grown personally <laughs> in the way no. you actually share of recent um, times, because I'm sure you you changed originally. <laughs> you grew a lot in the original days, but now has it changed? Yeah, you? I mean it's 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 shifted a lot over the last few years. You know, in terms of what I've been willing to share and what I've coached on, because um, when it started, it was a very I just want to help everybody kind of thing. Yep. Um, and then as I got a little deeper into the process, you start learning about marketing and they're all about, you got to speak to your ideal customer avatar. Who's that one person that you can speak to, Yeah, you know? Uh, and for me, looking at my history, I'd had two divorces, a kid with each one of them. So I started going down the path of working with divorced dads uh, because that was a, a group of, you know, a group of people that I knew had, a very desperate need for somebody to help them. You know, me being mm. um, the person I was coming from where I came from, very small farming type of community, very blue collar, hard workers, hunting, fishing, all of that. Yeah. Um, we didn't talk about our emotions. You don't talk about emotions and share anything. You know, you know, if you're a guy, that's going to get you yeah. beat up, you know, from where I came from. Uh, and, mm. and so just knowing that's what most men go through, I was like, I can be a great conduit for them to get out of where they're at and into where they need to be to help them heal, you know, after mm. they've gone through this divorce, because so many of them get in this toxic state of, I just hate women. I hate relationships. And the crappiest part about that, it'd be bad enough. If it was just them, mm. but the problem is they're bringing their kids into that. Yeah. You know? And, and for me, I was very blessed in the fact that, you know, I did say I had two divorces, two different kids, or kid in each one of those, there was a 15 year gap between my kids. So where I was not, I don't say I was a bad dad, but I wasn't there and present and involved with my son right, all yeah. that much. Cause I had kind of my own, like I said, shit, dude, I was 21 when I had my kid, I was still a kid myself. I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> so I wasn't really there for him as much as I could have been. Yeah. And then having that 15 year gap and then getting introduced to personal development and growing a lot myself. When my daughter came around, I, I said, I'm changing this, you know, um, this pattern of what I did before I'm going to be there for her. I'm going to make her a major priority in my life. Mm. And so that's what I wanted to be able to take and present to other dads was let's let me show you how, yes, maybe this thing happened in your life and yes, this sucked, but you can overcome it. You can learn from it. You can grow from it. You can be an amazing dad. We don't have to look at this as a broken home just because it's you and your daughter or you and your son Mm. or your kids, whatever it happens to be. You can still create an absolutely incredible and amazing life for them and yourself so let me help you do that. Mm. And that's what I did for almost two years. And then towards the end of last year, that's when the shift really started happening for me to want to kind of come back to a broader audience. Right. Because while I loved working with divorced dads and helping them, yeah, I knew that was not what I was meant for in terms of the impact I was going to be 
have because there were so many other people I knew I could help. And so I branched it back out more to once I looked at it, it's, it's all mindset, you know, yeah. so I went to more of the mindset and the performance and helping people overcome those stories. Um, but yeah, it's again, you just kind of just flow with it and see what's working, what's not. And yeah. I built a great community with the men and I, and what I've done is I've kind of turned it over to let them be kind of self-supportive because what we did is we hosted a zoom call every week. Well, yeah. I did, I hosted a zoom call every week for two years where we would uh-huh. just come in there and it'd be an open forum. They can come in, they can talk and share what's kind of going on mm. and share experiences with one another. So when one on one come in and say, my ex did this yesterday and oh, I just don't know how I'm going to deal with it. And mm. the guys can come in like, well, this happened to me. And maybe you could think about this. And you know, other guys would chime in and they would support each other. So now it's kind of like a self-run community where I'll still pop in from time to time, see how they're doing, make sure everything's still going on the right path. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> for me, it was a really big thing. I'm like, there yeah. is no, I don't say there's no negativity in here. If you feel like there's something you need to share, yeah. come in here, feel free to share it. But we're going to look for the positive outcome. How can we learn from this? How can we grow from this? Yes. Let's not just come in here for the idea of complaining and moaning and bitching about everything. <laughs> yeah. That's not going to help you. No. So... Uh, but so, then, yeah, well, that's, that's, that's when I made the shift. But that's fantastic that you you still maintain that whilst you're growing, you know, in your other areas as well. That's yeah. um, that's something that I think you know is very commendable that you you've been able to achieve and carry that still through and keep that community going because that's just your essence, isn't it? It's just making sure yeah. that you know you're helping communities and that community was your initial or one of your initial communities that you really yeah. helped grow with. It's really good. What advice would you give anyone that is looking to start something like start creating communities and helping them and and so forth? Just, you know, figure out what you're excited about. You know, you and I talked about it, you know, before we hopped on here and started Mm -hmm. the official call. Just if you have that calling, you have that feeling where like, you know, you can help people. What is it that you feel you can help them with? And just start small. I know, you know, I talked about, you know, building my community locally. If that's Mm -hmm. something you're looking to do, uh, you know, I... I went in there and started bringing in speakers and started speaking myself. You don't have to do that. There's actually another gentleman here locally that I've connected with. And what he started was something similar specifically for men. Um, But he doesn't do like the organized, let me have this big speaker thing kind of come in. He just literally hosts lunch, you know, once a month, he's like, Hey, I'm going to host a you know, lunch once a month, you know, I'm going to go be at the local, you know, pub, whatever. Anybody wants to come in join me for lunch. Awesome. Great. And we'll just have great conversations. Mm. So if you're looking at a local standpoint, you can do that. And even similar, you know, if you're going in like an online space, you can host a zoom call where it is just let me host an open space. Come on in and talk. You don't have to feel like you're the only one that's going to bring any value to the call. You're going to have people naturally come in and as they share their story and feel comfortable, they're going to build that group. Um, and again, support each other, help each yeah. other, help you. I, yeah. I, a lot of those, you know, calls that I did on the zoom, I was just the guy that showed up at the beginning, like, Hey, how's everybody doing? You know, well, who, you know, and they would start talking and it I would chime talk, in from yeah. time to time, but it, it'd be yeah. an hour and a half hour, 45 minute call. And I would maybe speak 10 minutes, you know, yeah. 20 minutes yeah. at the most, everybody yeah. else is just, you know, sharing their stories. Mm. So don't feel like you have to know everything. That's the other big piece of this too, is we talked about Very imposter true. syndrome, feeling like, oh, well, this person's so much better at it than me. And this person knows this. And I don't know that you have your own unique perspective. And no matter how many life coaches out there are, you know, or there are, or if they're mindset coaches or whatever, you know, fitness coaches you're doing, I mean, stop and think about how many bankers there are in this world. How many realtors are there in this world? <laughs> how many just like everything that you, you know, professional there are in this world, every one of them brings their own unique perspective, their own unique background to it. So you just be you and you're going to resonate with some people. Some people are not going to be turned on by you at all. You know, yeah. we talked before this call started about me and my language. There's people that just will turn away instantly from me and my language, but there are other people that automatically are drawn to it and yeah. me with them, you know? Yeah. Uh, so just be yourself do what feels natural to you and let it flow. Let it evolve. Don't feel like you have to figure it all out beforehand. You know, we've talked about this a couple of times. Don't feel like you have to have it all figured out in the beginning, because I guarantee you, if you tried to plan out what's going to happen over the next year, five years, 10 years, that plan is going to be so far away from what you actually do over the next year, five years, 10 years. It's insane. So yeah. give yourself an idea, a rough idea, maybe kind of with the direction you want to go and then just mm. start going down that path uh, Martin Luther King has a great quote. Um, you don't have to see the whole staircase. Just take the first step. 
That's all you gotta do. Take that first step. And then when you get to that next step, you're like, oh, what seems logical from here? I'll take that next step. And then just keep going and going and going and you'll figure it out. Very wise words there. <laughs> Thank you. And it's, you know, we we know that, you know, there's, when we take a step and, you know, we start thinking, oh, I think I can do this. I might start this, you know, this style of wisdom business, you know, you're sharing my wisdom and so forth. And But when it comes to actually creating communities, and involving other people to help build that business, Mm -hmm. that's a big portion of it too. And that building process really does come from how real the host is because they have to trust you and they have to trust each other. And just like you did at that very first webinar that you went through, I keep saying webinar because I'm used to it, the very first (laughs) seminar that you went to and you discover that other people, like-minded people, that, you know, they've gone through similar things or they've had their challenges. Communities really build based on that because they start seeing that other people have done this. And when, you know, you've been through it yourself as a host, and are honest with yourself and honest with the people that you are trying to bring in, you will build your business. And it's, it's there. I really appreciate that. What is it about you? I think you pretty much answered it just before, but what is it that people resonate with you? Because I love to cuss. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I, I mean, be, I mean, in complete honesty, it is, I think it's authenticity. Um, yep. What you see is what you get. When I put it out there, I, I just, I can't be fake, you know, with it. I just, I can't, it just drives me to the core insane to try and be fake. And that was honestly a hard thing to really put out there for a while Mm. because again, knowing, you know, I'm just going to drop the F bomb around. Fuck is my favorite word. And Mm. knowing that that offends a very large portion of the population. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm on, you know, I'm, I'm out here trying to present myself, but I'm afraid to say this one word because it might trigger somebody. Mm. And it just finally got to a point, like, I don't want to be successful at something if I can't be myself, you know, I don't yeah. want to put myself in this little box of, okay, I'm successful, but I'm hating everything I'm doing because I can't be who I am. Yeah. I would rather be a failure at being me than a success at being somebody else. Mm. And so I think really that's what I get a lot of feedback on. It's just my energy. And that comes from me just being myself, love me, hate me. Um, it's, I don't want to say I don't care, but I'm going to get over it real quick because yeah. you're just not my people. And it doesn't mean you're a bad person. No. It doesn't mean I'm a better person. It just means we have different, you know, things that we're interested in. We have different ways of going about life. And that yeah. is what it is. Uh, and maybe that comes from age Maybe it comes from just going through enough situations in my life where yeah. I realize I just, I can't be perfect. It ain't going to yeah. happen. And you can't so hold well on to me. what other people have issues with. It's not yeah. yours to carry. So, you know, no. move on from it. Yeah. But yeah. we always say it's like you're dating when you, you know, when you're starting a business such as this and you're sharing your knowledge and your wisdom and everything like that, it's like you, you're dating because you either have to yeah. click with your audience, your clients, whoever it is that, you know, you, your community is, you've got to click with them. So you've yeah. got to date in a way. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Hey, you know, hey, you know, and I'll be honest, even part of my evolution was after getting the divorce and then going on a bunch of dates, you know, because those first couple, you're like, oh my gosh, I want them to like me. I hope yeah. they like me. I can't say this. I can't talk about that. And then after like the eighth or ninth one, you're like, dude, I don't care. Uh, yeah, Here's who I am. <laughs> Here's where I screwed up my life. You okay with that? Cool. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Cool. Let's keep talking. It's you know, just you just to get chase. to a point where you <laughs> just don't care because you can't keep putting on that fakeness. I mean, no, you're you going to... They're going to find out the truth at some point. So you might as well just go ahead and not maybe... I always go back to the movie Hitch with, well, it doesn't talk about him anymore, Will Smith. Um, but he had the movie Hitch and he was the dating coach and he actually, um, Kevin James, they were they had a scene in there. And I always go back to this when they were talking about it. Kevin James is like, I just want to be me. And Will Smith's like, they want to see you, but not all of you on the first date. Yeah. You, know, you got to <laughs> hold it back a little bit, yeah, you yeah. know? So yeah, you, you want to be yourself, but you know, sometimes you have to build up. I can't go on a first date and say, Hey, I was adopted. I was not, my dad was an alcoholic and I got arrested for 10 pound robbery. I'm 17. That might scare a few people off. Just a few. Yeah. We'll get there soon enough. I'll share the story with you. I'm an open book, but mm. maybe not the first thing we talk about. But it doesn't t- totally define you either by saying no, this. It doesn't. So you don't need to say those things no. or that deep anyways. <laughs> no, no. Good point though. Stuff. Good point. <laughs> What's the biggest challenge you think you're facing at the moment when it comes to, you know, building your business? 
Ah, uh, man. Biggest challenge is really just expanding the audience, you know, which is a part of, you know, why I love doing the podcast, you know, getting introduced yeah. to new audiences, hmm. um, finding new people because with social media, you know, it's great. It's a wonderful tool, yeah. but the algorithms are also kind of crazy. And so it's harder to reach people, um, expand yeah. the networks uh, without doing some kind of crazy paid advertising. Cause I don't get into that. I want it to be more of a natural, authentic Organic. connection. Yeah. Uh, so for me, that has been, probably the biggest challenge is just getting exposed to that new audience and bringing new people into my environment, you know, making them aware of me. Mm. And that's where this has really helped. What I've been doing a lot of lately is Instagram reels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I know yep. that's been pretty popular and I, I struggled with that even for a while because I, you have to do it consistently and oh, you know, yeah. a little bit of that <laughs> imposter syndrome, like, well, what am I going to say? How can I yeah. do this? And I finally personally found something that worked for me um, where I can get on there daily. You know, I've got something, it's a very short little real thing that I do, actually a couple of things that I do. And so that has really helped um, build my audience on there. Uh, but that is probably the biggest one, which is expanding the audience. Can I ask what it is that myself. you do on your reels? So for my reels, what I have been doing is um, I have a text community that I've started doing. And so what I do, you only have like 400 characters that you can, you know, in this yeah, text message, really concise, you, yeah. <laughs> you got to be tight. And so what I started doing was I've been doing this text community since the beginning of the year. And what I realized uh, like a couple of weeks ago, probably even maybe a month ago at the best yeah. was I could take those, record those as reels and repurpose them, you know, which we always yeah. hear about that, you know, in, <laughs> in all this, like repurpose, repurpose, repurpose. You don't have to keep reinventing the wheel. You can use your same stuff over and over again. Yeah. And so that's what I started doing. And they're literally... How long are they? I mean, like 20, 30 seconds long is like the longest one. So awesome. it's that perfect, you know, size for an Instagram reel. And so I just take my phone out, you know, record the, the video, have it do the captions. So that pops up on there. I put a little title at the bottom and I put a little, you know, cool background music. So depending on what it is, yeah. uh, like today was one of them, like my um, reel was about the journey, you know, learning to enjoy the journey and not worrying about the destination. So I tried to find a song that kind of, I, I did life as a highway, you know, so yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> try and find some little music that kind of matches up with, you know, kind of the theme awesome. of what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. And so it's, it's fun and I toss yeah. them out there and I get, you know, pretty good response from them. And, and again, it's building that awareness. It's building, you know, uh, my yeah. community's getting new, you know, new followers. And if it doesn't, this is a big thing too. Hmm. Sometimes we don't get that result back from, you know, if we put out a post or a reel or something, we're like, oh yes. my gosh, you know, that sucked. That was something I worked on so hard. It was supposed to, was supposed to be like groundbreaking. You know, <laughs> people are going to like love this. This is going to be the one that set yes. me off to the moon, you know? Yeah. Um, it doesn't always work that way. Just understand that if it's good, if it's valuable, if it's great information, you're building the foundation for the people who are going to find you later. And they're going to go back and they're going to say like, Oh exactly. wow, look at that. You know, exactly. So, so don't feel like you're wasting your time. If you're not getting the results now, you will get them. If you just are consistent with it and keep doing it over and over and over. And again, that's building that depth of um, information and, you know, stuff for them to look at later. Yeah. You're building content. You're yeah. building content and you're building that message as well. Yeah. And just because you send out that message then and there, it doesn't mean that no one's interested. It just means they haven't heard it yet. They haven't traveled to that point that you were yeah. at yet and they will get there. And that, that's just the biggest, I think it's the biggest challenge that we all, a lot of us do have. It's that audience building and it's that, you know, the crickets syndrome, yeah. I would call it, because we do sit there and go, oh, there's crickets. I just yeah. But you've just got to keep trying. You've got to keep trying, yeah. keep going, keep, because the, mm -hmm. and it's interesting. Someone said to me just the other day and they brought it to fruition. It was like, you know what, but until you hear it from someone else, you're like, it's so true. But you don't know, you really don't know who is talking about you. No yeah. one has analytics on people saying your name or talking mm -hmm. about you. Word of mouth is so goddamn strong. And, yes, social media is fantastic and we've got our Google Analytics and all that sort of stuff. That's fantastic. Yeah. They give us certain amount of information there. But when it comes down to it, 
you know, your reels and stuff like that, someone will be laughing and go, oh, that's freaking awesome. And, you know, share it with someone to talk about it with a friend or they could be on transport and someone else hears your name and you just don't, you can't pick up on that. And no. it's so true. Crickets, you might hear it first, but, you know, they'll join your journey at some point along the way. And that's true. Yeah. It's, well, it's, and, and the other thing too is literally, you know, I talked about my friend who hosts the monthly lunch. We got together just this past Sunday and he made the comment to me, um, you know, while we was like, man, love your stuff, seeing you everywhere. It's like, I don't, I don't comment or like it, but I see it all. And so that's the thing we don't really think about is exactly. how many people are out there watching it, loving it, you know, consuming it and mm. it's affecting their lives, but they just don't happen to hit that like button or they don't happen yeah. to comment. And yeah. I've heard that so many times where people come and like, oh my God, I see your stuff every day. I love it. You know, thank you so much. Yeah. Like, well, comment on it, damn it. Yeah. You know? so, so I know you're there. <laughs> the algorithm's yeah. not letting me get up there. because. <laughs> so, you know, but, and, and again, that's why we just have to understand that if we yeah. know, if we know we're doing the right thing, if we're feeling, you know, our own soul uh, mm. by doing the work that we know that we're meant to do, even if it doesn't impact the millions of lives if we just know there's that one person out there and we can just be okay yeah. working with that or even if it just makes me feel good i know even if i never got paid for this i would still probably well i know i would be doing some of it because as i look back on my facebook it's always popping up the memories i've got 10 years worth of content that i've been putting out so long before i ever even had an interest or an idea that i would ever be doing anything of this nature yeah. i was posting the memes you know that were like positive quotes or whatever yeah. um and just hey have a great day yeah so just do what you're called to naturally do exactly and that's going to lead me to my next question and i love asking my guests this is what legacy are you planning to leave oh my goodness the legacy i plan on leaving is just one that um you know creating creating a life by design, you know, by choice, by overcoming whatever challenges we've gone through, realizing that is the key word we talked about earlier is it's, it's all a choice. You know, whatever has happened in life, those were just random events. You know, we can choose to see it however we want to choose it. There's an old saying that talks about, you know, two alcoholic or two, two boys that grew up in an alcoholic um, family, mm -hmm. you know, dad's an alcoholic. I mean, and so the one son, you know, they ask him, you know, he doesn't drink at all. And they say, why don't you drink? He's like, well, look at my dad. What, what do you think I would do? And then you go to talk to the other son and he's a raging alcoholic himself. You know, he drinks all the time. It's like, well, why do you drink? He's like, well, look at my dad. What did you think I was going to do? So it's two people living in the exact same environment, but they've chosen to look at it differently. You know, yeah. one says, I have a dad who's an alcoholic, so I'm never going to drink. I'm never going to be that guy. And the other guy looks at it and says, well, that's what my dad did. That's who I'm going to be. It's all a choice. And mm -hmm. so for me, that is the legacy that I want to leave is just to help everybody understand that you have the power to create whatever life you want, regardless of what you've been through, um, regardless of what challenges you've had in your life. And more specifically, even beyond that is decide for yourself what that amazing life looks like. So many of us get caught up in this idea that it has to be the jet set life. I'm traveling the world and I've got the mansion and the you know, Rolls Royce car, whatever. I just got to be that, or it's a sucky life. No, man, it can be whatever it is that you want to be. Uh, it can be, and I hate to use this as an example, but this one you hear so much, like it can be just as a, as a mom, you know, a stay at home mom. And I don't know why we use the word just a stay at home mom. That's an amazing, incredible gift to give a child, to have that mom right there or the dad right there with them 24 seven, raising them, being that, you know, pillar for them, so if that is the choice that you've decided, this is who I want to be. This is the life that I want to live. That is awesome. That's amazing. Mm. Figure out what it is you want in your life and then create that. That is the legacy that I want to leave is to just give people that option and know that's available for them. That's a beautiful legacy. And realizing like, Again, I have, I have many conversations. We all do. <laughs> Just, you know, one that was really that hit home the other day was, you know, so many of us tend to, or many people tend to sort of say, um, without realising it, but they victimise themselves. And like you said, there's the, the, the story of the two boys. One decided to play the victim or be the victim. Mm -hmm. Of, yeah. his, of his father and the other one decided, well, no, I'm not going to be the victim of this. I'm going to create an alternative, you know, based on yeah. the faults. So, no, beautiful, beautiful legacy there. You have been amazing to chat to today, <laughs> absolutely wow. amazing, James. Thank and you. I would love to know if you have an offer that you can share with our audience today. 
Yeah. So, I mean, nothing special, like in terms of programs, anything like that right now that I'm putting out, um, as we did talk about, you know, community, I am building a Facebook community. Um, yep. That's probably where I would steer people if they want to connect. Um, obviously, I'm going to be on Instagram, you know, at the real James Dunn. You can do that. But if you're looking to kind of come into my world on a more regular basis where I interact, uh, it's called, oh my God, what's it called? Master your mindset. I had to stop and think about it. Like, wait, what's my group called? I know. It's Master like, yeah, your mindset. <laughs> yes. If you look on Facebook, it should be there. Or like if you yeah. find me on Instagram, I can I can steer you to that. But that would be the one thing. That would be the best starting point because everything that I do will be, you know, kind of shared through there. Okay. But I just want to give people that opportunity to come in and have a safe space to kind of share what they're going through, to talk to other people, to know that they're supported, know that they've got people there with them that, uh, you know, are also looking to create that amazing life, whatever that happens to be for them. Um, Cause yeah. we literally had that very specific conversation about what is an amazing life to me or to you or to whoever mm-hmm. we had that inside that group uh, just yeah. a few days ago. Oh, cool. So we're here to support you on whatever level, you know, you are looking yeah. at in terms of success or whatever journey you're on. Well, I think you're absolutely amazing, James. The fact that, you know, you know, you're a coach, but as well as that, you have created communities where you're not just the speaker, but you're letting everyone, you know, communicate within, you know, their own scenarios, their situations, stories, experiences, et cetera, and growing from that between each other rather yeah. than just, you know, being a directive coach and stuff like that. I think it's just amazing of what you're doing and on so many different levels. And I really appreciate your time today. And everyone, you know, make sure you click on the details. All the details and everything will be in our summary podcast summary below. So be sure to click on the link and don't forget to subscribe to the Wise Known Podcast. Thank you again, James, for your time. Oh, thank you so much, Nikki. It has been an absolute pleasure. Uh, I really appreciate it. Lovely. Thanks for listening to the Wise Dome podcast. If you enjoyed and have been inspired by this episode and you'd like to support the podcast, do subscribe and please share it with others. Post about us on social media or leave a rating and review. To catch all the latest from me, Nikki Kelly, you can follow me on Instagram at Wise Dome Podcast, W-I-S-E, D-O-M-E podcast. I'm Nikki Kelly. Thanks again. And we'll catch up next time.